Good evening. This is Professor Rush back again with Alien OO, galactic traveler, protector of antiquities, deliverer from evil, and back from a run, as you will recall from last episode, to intercept Orok Tet and prevent the Interocitor from falling into evil hands. And yes, Maudie is coming back as well. Once again, here is OO. your, uh, your donkey up to the bridge. Donkey? That can't be right. Who wrote this script? Skagmut. Oh, deep. Bring yourself here, and if you have a donkey, leave it there. Our video is out again. Not sure if audio is working at all. I hate these wormholes. Yes, oh, oh. Here I am. Not working properly? Probably should smack it again. <laughs> hmm, yes. Smack it again. You know, old oh, dude, I am told that sarcasm is the lowest form of humor, but I, I disagree. I like sarcasm, but I don't like... Everything is working. I knew hitting it would work. Old equipment, you know. By the way, I can see you are happy that Maudie is going to be back. Well, almost happy. <laughs> I am overjoyed. Thank you for reminding me. There's nothing like good news. Uh, why are we whispering? We're on? Oh, hello, old Johnny boy. <laughs> Just practicing our comedy routine for tonight. Uh, are you there, John? Uh, yes, so, oh, oh, I'm here. <laughs> you sure have an interesting crew, no doubt all belonging to the Actors Guild. A little like Abbott and Costello, or perhaps the Three Stooges. Actors Guild? Let me see. Yes, here it is. Ha, 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 You do have a sense of humor. Now, let's see. Abbott and Costello. Abbott and Costello. Yes, here it is. A comedy duo from the 1940s and 1950s. Is that a geography? No, no. Must be a time period. Blah, blah, blah. Most famous for the who's on first skit. Hmm. Let's see, a skit. Ah, yes, a play. Also famous for tax evasion. Tax evasion, ah, yes. Those people who refuse to submit to government extortion, yes. So you think this is a comedy routine? Let's see, The Three Stooges. Another comedy routine, slapstick comedy. Slapping people around, ha 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 ha. I probably would enjoy that. Anyway, now that we're on the subject of comedy and jokes, have I ever told you the story behind where the term Baker's Dozen came from? Well, the term is not used much these days for economic reasons, but it evolved out of an economic principle that if you buy 12, you get one free. Uh, where did you pick up that expression, uh, a Baker's Dozen? Your uh, database, John, your database. <laughs> I wasn't expecting you to get into rhetoric. Just yes or no would have been fine. Anyway, once upon a time, there was this baker, and he had a beautiful, beautiful daughter. Oh, no, no, no. I know where you're going with this. You told this story once before. Oh, no, no, John. This is a different joke. 
In the first one, the baker was filling the cream puffs, and in this one, he merely watches. So this is different. So once upon a time... No, no, that's it. People don't want to hear these types of jokes. Oh, don't shake your head at me. Once again, you've ruined a perfectly good joke. Anyway, I'm about to call a rock tip and give him my come home to Jesus talk. <laughs> so let's call the old boy out here. Oh, rock tip. Oh, rock teddy boy. Come out, come out, wherever you are, and have speaks with me. And let me know of your innocence in a certain manner brought before me by our man Joe. Do not be afraid, for who being innocent has ever perished? Where were the upright ever destroyed? And as I have observed, those who plow evil and those who sow trouble are... Are you listening to me? You know, I don't make this stuff up simply to amuse myself. I'm, I'm here, cousin. Uh, this is quite an act of chivalry, you coming after, after Marty as if I had kidnapped her or something. You know, uh, you have a very bad, bad temper. Remaining calm and relaxed and pay no attention to your left knee, realizing that hurting me after you gave her to me, you're simply taking back what you gave anyway. And please, please take her back. Mm, I got a woman, me as she can be. Ha 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 ha. Pay no attention to your left knee. None of your mind tricks like you used on Joe. No, no. I'm not going to hurt you. Of course not. Because you keep that silly earthling around, sort of your own private policeman, keeping an eye on you. <laughs> Rather ironic, don't you know? So he can tell others how just and righteous you are. Enough. The Interocitor. I'm here for the Interocitor. Now, 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 take it easy. I, I know where it is. And double plus girl. Have, have I ever done a quadruple girl before? Ah, uh, yes, I believe you have. Let's see, that little matter at Sodmore, where you rained upon those temple thieves who lied to you. The brimstone, the fire. I thought the pillar assault was a nice touch. <laughs> but, uh... I didn't lie to you, dear cousin, as Job had the interoster in his possession when you asked me where it was. Sodmore. Yes, Sodmore. Most unfortunate. Messy, too. And they kept rebuilding. <laughs> now, that's what I call slapstick comedy, where you slap a whole town around. <laughs> Sorry, I got carried away. The good old days. Now, let me get back to my anger. So I'm getting the picture that you and Job are plotting against me. Sort of Job's way of getting back at me for his now ugly, once handsome, ha 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 ha, face. And you spent the last few weeks being chased around your ship by Maudie while she sings, Need You Now. Ha, 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 looking over your shoulder, knowing she's sneaking up, crew members making note of your every move. Ha, 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 ha. Okay, enough. So you two are in cahoots. Uh, by the way, that is an old western term, meaning two hoots instead of one. The one thing you didn't count on was mine. Also, I always know when you're lying. Because you blink your eyelids. I learned this in borolindistic programming classes. And as for Job, he can't help showing his face in yours. And among other things, he lies all the time. He was trained to be a politician. So this isn't all about the interocitor. I'm not admitting to anything. I am innocent of all crimes. 
I'm going to give you a little time to think about what you and Job have conspired to do. Maybe until this time tomorrow. Maybe. Because maybe I'll change my mind. I'll call on you tomorrow. Oh, Johnny boy, are you there, John? Uh, yes, I'm here. Uh, why exactly is Ulrock Tet so frightened of you, and, and what's going on here? Well, first, or number one, he knows that I will not be intimidated by anyone. I have the biggest stick, and I'm not talking corkscrews here. And B, Ulrock Tet is constructing a story as to where the interoceter is and rearranging whatever else he has planned. You see, John, Maudie is getting toward the end of her cycle. The worst is over, but Ulrock Tet didn't know this. So she was sent there to seduce him, yes, which, as you can guess, didn't happen, but also to persuade him to give up some information, which also didn't happen. So we've bugged his ship. <laughs> now I need to get Maudie back. I need my navigator. So we have to make some sort of deal where Orok Tet thinks he is winning and getting his way. So I'm going to let him go in exchange for Maudie. You heard him beg me to take her back and retrieve the interoceter. We'll let him do that. Will follow his every move, <laughs> because surely his intent is not to give it to me, for I think I know why he wants the interoceter. So there's more to this. But why does he want the interoceter? Apparently, the technology is somewhat obsolete, according to your standards, anyway. Well, if I told you the whole story, then that would be the end of everything. So. Best to let the story unfold rather than jumping right to the seventh seal, John. Oh, by the way, John, have I told you the story about the butcher who had a very beautiful wife who enjoyed pork so <laughs> What's wrong with you? I'm not going to let you tell these jokes of yours. Well, John, it's called comic relief for your edification. It is simply a literary device to either end a segment of a story or divert attention with some sort of symbolism, away from or toward some important aspect of the story. Jokes can also indicate stress in the play, warning that something good or bad is about to happen. So here is one for you. A rabbi, priest, and imam walked into a bar, and the rabbi and the priest said to the imam, what are you doing here? <laughs> I think that's just hilarious. <laughs> well, I suppose you have some knock-knock jokes, then. Why, yes, I do. Knock-knock. Who's there? That's correct. What's correct? Who was there? Who was where? There. There? That's correct. What's correct? Who was there? Stop, please stop. Shades of Abbott and Costello. Boss, boss, Maudie is arriving at gate 12. Sounds like a horse race. Tell her I'll meet her in the conference area. Must go, John, and debrief Maudie, for bad stuff is surely afoot. Oh, yes. Interesting weather patterns showing up on your planet. Ta-ta!